I'm going to start by just exploring these things while we look at this architectural photo that was taken in Ireland. Um, you'll see on the right hand side, the edit at the very top means you're in that right view. You are in details view and you're now capable to make edits because you've gotten out of that grid view mode. Some of these modes at the bottom, and you'll see there's all these different squares and I have a little train on my mouse to help follow for to help you follow where the mouse is. But these aren't these are made to see the photos that you have, not to actually edit them. This one icon that's just details view is what allowed me to get to this edit screen. So that's what you're seeing in the top right. The very, very top is there's three options only. It's auto, black and white, that's what BMW is, and H and R, or HDR, sorry. So if you click on auto, this is the AI attempt to edit the photo. Um, this will shock you sometimes. It is pretty good. You'll also put it on photos sometimes and realize that's not at all what you were going for. But for beginners, it's really good jumping off point because sometimes if it's really hard for you to spot what's wrong with the photo, auto can sometimes help you get there. And it's not, it, it will actually show you what it did to the photo. So when we get into the different columns, like light, color, effects, and detail, all of that, you'll actually see if you hit auto, what it did to the photo. So it's not just like a blanket button, it's actually going to move those dials for you in the light and effects and color columns. So you can kind of get an idea of what they did or what AI did to help you get there, if that makes sense. So for this particular photo, auto did a great job actually. Um, it made my blues bluer in the sky. It did up, I think it upped some texture and detail, I can't tell. I'll find that out when I get into it. And then lighting wise, it adjusted highlights for me, shadows for me, brought blacks down, whites up. It just kind of knew how to get me there. So this is a really good jumping off point. But I'm gonna go ahead and take it off since we're gonna try to do some of this from scratch. So I took off the auto, you'll see it's just a lot more muted. The clouds are, it's a little bit harder to see exactly what the clouds look like, where the clouds stop and the sky starts. Just because the blue is so light in this photo that it's borderline getting close to being white. There also there's just that black and white option. If you need that, it's there. Uh, I don't really use this black and white very much. I think it's, you, you normally need like a lot more detail to your photo before you throw it in black and white because it just doesn't pop and have the contrast it needs to. So that's there if you ever need a really quick fix for black and white, but it's not how I would normally use the black and white feature. And then you'll see this high dynamic range button. Um, I'll read you exactly what it says here. And you can read it on the screen too. Edit, display, and save photos in high dynamic range. Experience increased depth and realism with brighter highlights, deeper shadows, improved tonal separation, and more vivid colors. Um, it wants you to take a tour. We'll do that in a different video, but I'm not gonna go too deep into to HDR right now. I just don't need that. Um, and I don't, I don't think it's something that you'll use that that often. Okay. So let's move down to the actual different columns under here, the first one being light. So if you open up the light column, you'll see six different options. It's exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, blacks, and whites. So I know when you think, when most people think of exposure or they think of highlights, they think of white bright. Um, those actually aren't the exact same as whites in this particular context, they do different things. Um, and then contrast, shadows, and blacks are what we associate with those darker photos. These particular effects won't necessarily just make the photo darker. There's really strategic ways that you can use them um, that can be really helpful. So let's just explore these different options. So exposure, I tell people with exposure, you gotta, people tend to take exposure up really high really quickly. It basically just turns your photo all the way to white. It will, what we call, blow out the photo so fast. So I kind of tell everyone to take a chill pill when they're using exposure. A little bit goes a very long way, but it's just a good way to bring up like the overall light that the photo has. But I'm talking like 0 0.02, 0 0.03 when you're using exposure. Um, it is, again, a little bit goes a long way. You'll see when I bring the exposure all the way up, this photo basically just looks like a very bright white light. It is, it is extremely bright. And exposure all the way down makes it very, very dark. So let's just, I don't actually need any exposure on this particular photo, it was very bright that day, so I'm not gonna use it. I normally do use exposure a little bit, but I'm not gonna do that right now. 
Contrast is something that we probably would use on this particular photo. Um, just going to kind of show you what it does. I'm not going to go into all the details of getting this photo perfect, but you'll just see when you pull contrast up, the, the darks do get darker. You see a lot more differentiation in these lines where you see the sun's hitting this side of the building and it's really bright versus the front of it, it was more in the shade and it's really dark. And pulling the contrast up just exacerbates the difference between those two. Pulling the contrast down basically it just feels like someone kind of sucked the life out of the photo. Um, contrast coming down can be great when there's harsh shadows on someone's face or your photo was just like a little bit overexposed on one side and underexposed on the other. Um, so let's bring our contrast kind of back to the middle so we can explore highlights. So here, if I pull the highlights up, you'll see the, most of what's being affected when I pull highlights up in this particular photo is the clouds. Um, those clouds are the the whitest thing in the photo. So bringing highlights up is just, is bringing those, the whites are getting whiter and just everything that's on the high end of the photo is getting, is getting higher. If I pulled highlights all the way down, it doesn't do much besides, it really creates a, a little bit more uh, of a differentiation between the blue sky and the clouds. So pulling the highlights down in this particular photo actually does help me because my, the, the sky was so light blue that day that it actually was closer to the cloud color than I would have liked it to be. So I'll leave the highlights partially down just for the sake of going through this, but that's how that works. Pulling shadows all the way up or all the way down is gonna, in this particular case, because there's a lot of black and whites in this, it's gonna look like a more extreme version of the contrast feature, but opposite. When I'm pulling the shadows out, the photo gets lighter. It's taking those really dark hues, those shadows, those things that lie on the darker side of the color spectrum or the light spectrum away. So this is, again, it kind of looks like these buildings just have a lot less depth than they actually do um, because there's a lot more black in these particular buildings because you can see that it's they're old and they've got kind of this like moldy feature to them. That's kind of a gross word, but I don't know what else to call it. Just this kind of like rotting feature on this old building. But when I pull the shadows down, all those dark hues go with it. So what happened in this particular case is that we lost a ton of detail because the intricacy of this building lied in that the contrast between the lighter parts of the stone and the darker parts. So just so you can see, shadows all the way down, those pillars or those buildings get really dark. And then all the way up, it just looks like, again, someone kind of sucked the life out of them. So let's end up back in the middle. And then here's the whites. Pulling the whites all the way up is taking not only the whites that you see in the building a little bit up, but the sky is just totally, it's just totally blown out. Um, that can be really useful if you don't want to bring the whole exposure, the exposure of the entire photo up, but you do want to emphasize some of those lighter parts of the picture. Whites is a really good tool and it's a lot more forgiving than pumping up the exposure. So it's a good option to have. I use, I use the white and black manipulation in these photos all the time. Then here's what the black feature does. If I pull it all the way up again, for this particular one, it's it's mimicking, it's doing a, almost exactly what the shadows feature did. Not quite, but very, very close. It's just kind of taking those black areas of the photos and just lifting that black and making it less extreme. Um, in this particular case, kind of making the buildings themselves look more muted. And then if you pull the blacks all the way down, again, it's, it's same thing. For this particular photo, um, moving the blacks down and the shadows down is, is creating a similar effect. They kind of look the same, but it won't be the case on every photo. Um, these effects look different in all different types of photos, all different types of lighting. So just because one doesn't work for one particular photo does not mean that it's not going to work for other photos. Okay, so that gets us through the light column of Lightroom. Now you just kind of know what they do. You know exposures, highlights, and whites are kind of bringing your photo up and making them lighter, and contrast shadows and blacks are bringing the overall lighting in the photo down. However, they all do different things. So even if in this particular case, the shadows and the blacks, bringing those down kind of did the same thing, that does not mean it would be the case for every photo. So it's just learning how to use these, and a lot of this is trial and error. Even when you get really good at editing photos, um, you know, we try and tweak things all the time in our settings.